That was one of the least comfortable situations that Don had ever been in, because he couldn't even tell why he was so scared. The person in front of him should have been a lot less imposing than Antoine. After all, he was shorter, he had long blonde hair, and his eyebrows were nowhere near as large. On top of that, Antoine seemed to scowl most of the time, and that man certainly wasn't scowling. However, the more Don looked at him, the more he started to understand the irrational fear that had consumed him. Because although the man didn't seem to have an unfriendly expression on his face, there was a coldness to him that hadn't been present in Antoine. A coldness that, if anything, was even more terrible than a scowl. Once that man had entered Antoine's training compound, however, the fear passed from Don's mind and he started thinking straight again. He could tell that something was wrong, though. That man definitely wasn't one of Antoine's students. And after taking only a moment to think, Don decided that he wanted to know more. Quickly, Don snuck around the outskirts of the building, listening carefully for the sound of that man's footsteps, which were almost deliberately loud, as though he was hoping to be disruptive. And soon, Don started to hear someone shouting. Through the walls of the building, it was hard to tell what was said, but two people were definitely very angry with one another inside. And soon, they both started moving again, further towards the back of the building, forcing Don to hurry in order to keep up. Soon, the two men stopped moving, and fortunately for Don, they stopped in a room near the back of the building, with a tiny window at the top of the wall. It wasn't large enough for Don to see through it, but he could hear what was going on pretty well. Sure enough, one of the men speaking was Antoine, and the other, presumably, was the blonde-haired man, whose voice sounded light and young, like a gust of wind in spring, even when he was upset. In fact, he almost sounded boyish when he spoke. If you're at fault for this nonsense, then we need to settle a thing or two right here and now, Antoine. And if you're not at fault, then I want to hear that you're disciplining your students more. Antoine didn't even hesitate for a moment before replying to that, however. Believe it or not, Harold, the fine art of sabotage is not one of the things taught at my training compound. If any of my students have been making trouble for you, they did it without my help. Although, considering that hole that I found in one of my training rooms recently, I don't feel it would be right to punish anyone for this nonsense either. I had nothing to do with that hole, and you know it, Harold replied just as angrily. Besides, this wasn't just some petty vandalism on one of my training establishments. It was my defense room. I had two ballistae in there, and now they both have to be rebuilt. Don't you realize how short a time it'll be before Grant reappears? Antoine, however, had a clear note of smugness in his voice when he replied to that. Are you asking me for something, Harold? I'm asking you to take responsibility for your actions. Since your men caused this, I insist that they be the ones to fix it. Do you really think that's wise? I mean, the last time my students were in your defense room, they broke your ballistae. Do you really think you should be inviting them in there again? Doesn't sound smart to me. Don't threaten me, Antoine, Harold insisted furiously. You owe me this because in the end, you're responsible. I know you can force your students to do the right thing if you want to. However, Antoine's smugness didn't seem to be decreasing any when he replied next. Well, I do have a couple of ballistae myself. Why, what are you planning to use them for? Don't play stupid. You know Grant's going to be here in less than a day, and when he gets here, it'll take everything we've got to stop him. If I don't have those ballistae... Well, in that case, there's nothing to worry about, Antoine remarked as if he just won some massive victory. My men will be there when Grant arrives, and they'll use the ballistae to defeat him. Maybe your people should stay out of the way, though, since you won't have that kind of long-range support. By that point, Harold was clearly furious. In other words, you're planning to turn on me once we beat Grant, you scum. I knew you were a serpent, but I never thought you'd sink that far, just to get your revenge on me. Oh, don't be puerile, Antoine replied, though it seemed obvious that Harold had hit pretty close to the mark at that point. If I'd wanted to turn on you, I could have done it any time since Walter made his judgment. If you'd rather know the truth, instead of just fabricating your own story, though, I'll be glad to tell you. There's a first time for everything. The truth is, all I really want is satisfaction, Antoine replied at last, not really sounding genuine, though that may have had more to do with the way his voice typically sounded. You just have to acknowledge my technique, maybe talk to Walter about doing the same thing, and none of this has to continue. I'll tell my students we're good friends again, and... Good friends? Harold almost shrieked at that point. After what you did? However, Antoine still sounded as though he was very firm in his decision, and his next words only reinforced that. If you still want to argue about the past, then you clearly don't want us to get along badly enough. Let me tell you what my plan is now, Harold. We're going to fight Grant, and just like before, you'll lose and I'll win. This time, though, you won't get to ignore the results of the fight. I think that you still can't beat me, and I think that Grant is going to kill you. 
When that happens, I'll be the hero of Arin, and even your followers won't have any chance but to abandon your technique as the outdated relic it is. Harold said something else after that, but Don didn't hear it, because at that moment two incredibly strong arms seized him from behind. A lot of strange thoughts rushed through Don's head when those powerful arms grabbed him from behind. Of course, it was perfectly normal to be terrified in that kind of situation, but for some reason, Don just couldn't seem to find any room in his thoughts for fear, and he wasn't even sure why. It was the second time that day that Don's feelings seemed to be going in a bizarre direction which didn't make a whole lot of sense to him. For some reason, though, he just couldn't bring himself to feel too scared by the person who was holding him by the shirt, the young woman with the tough, wiry-looking arms and long brown hair which went down past her shoulders. In fact, Don couldn't seem to stop thinking about what those men in the room beyond had been saying, and he kept rolling their words over in his head because he knew that something about that situation was definitely wrong. The woman who was holding Don looked relatively plain-looking, except for a couple of traits that really stood out. The first was her nose, which was very long and pointed-looking like the nose of a goblin, and the second was the fact that she was clearly late into a pregnancy. At first, the brown-haired woman looked very angry and suspicious, but once she got a good look at Don, her whole expression changed. Suddenly, she started to look more confused than upset, and after taking a moment to calm down, though she still didn't release Don, the woman asked him, I've never seen you around here before. Who are you? Where do you come from? However, the words of the two men inside were still circling through Don's head and distracting him from what was going on right in front of him. He'd only barely heard the woman's question, so he hadn't really meant to lie a moment later when he muttered to himself, Grant. However, that answer seemed to have made the woman furious, because in only a moment she'd lifted him right off his feet, jarring him back to reality. She lowered him to the ground a moment later, calming down a bit, but he hardly felt as if his situation was getting any better. You probably think that's hysterical, the woman remarked furiously. So you must not be from around here. We don't make jokes about that sort of thing. If I were you, I'd go right to the Jera Master and ask him to send you back to wherever you came from, because this isn't a good time for Taurus and Arryn. By that point, though, Don could tell there had been a big misunderstanding, and he just didn't feel right about that. No, no, I'm not a tourist, Don insisted, his strength of will returning in a flash. I came here to learn how to be a warrior. Arryn trains the best warriors in Graham, right? I mean, that's what I heard when I was in Gellum. For some reason, though, the woman's anger seemed to be fading as Don spoke, and when she finally replied to him, all that he could see on her face was sadness and worry. If I were you, I'd go back to Gellum, the woman remarked after only a few seconds of silence. Because by the end of the week, I don't think there'll be much left of Arryn.